Hi, this is Dee at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in the astronaut training experience. One of the things that astronauts need to be protected from when they're in space is the difference in pressure. On Earth, the air is pressing on us all the time to the point where we're not even aware of it. But in space, it's a vacuum. So we have to pressurize our spacecraft and our spacesuits. Once you're inside and you're in normal pressure, then everything is fine. You don't have to wear any special protective equipment. Air pressure is something that affects us every day of our lives, whether we realize it or not. And there's lots of fun things that you can do to demonstrate air pressure when you're at home. I'm going to show you a few of them. And these are things that are based on what we call Bernoulli's principle which says that a fast moving current is going to generate a low pressure zone. And so we're going to use that principle to move some objects around without touching them. The first one I'm going to do is a little game that I call Bernoulli ball. All you need is a ping pong ball and a plastic cup. In my case, to make it a little bit more challenging, I have two plastic cups. But the basics of Bernoulli ball is that I want to blow air across the cup to lift that ball up out of the cup. For an added challenge, I'm going to see if I can get it to jump into the first cup. Here we go. Oh, let me get these extra balls out of the way because I don't want them to start bouncing around too. Oh, that was really close. Let me try one more time. No, that one didn't make it either. Last try. Maybe you can have better luck with it than I did. So that's Bernoulli ball. Now I'm going to show you Bernoulli's water gun. Now, before I demonstrate Bernoulli's water gun, I have to let you know, you should only do this with your parents' permission, and it's probably something that you'll want to do outside, because people in the splash zone will get wet. I've added a little bit of food coloring to this water just so that you can see what happens a little bit better. And all you really need is any kind of a cup that has a lid on it and a straw. And in my case, I didn't have a lid for this cup, so I just taped a straw to the side, and that's fine too. Set that down. And then you're going to need a second straw that you're going to use as your blower. And I cut this in half because you don't need a whole one. You can put half of the straw in the cup, half of the straw to blow. Just want to make sure that the bottom of the straw is not all the way touching the bottom of the cup. Now this does take a little bit of practice. I might not get it on the first try, but I'm going to put the straw right across the top of this and blow hard and fast. I did get it on the first try. I don't know if my camera person got wet there. Let me do it sideways so that you can see that a little bit better. And you do have to do it fast and hard, but when you do, what's happening is the fast moving air across the top of the straw is creating a low pressure zone. So it's actually going to pull the water up and out. Again, hitting anyone who happens to be in the splash zone. So remember when you do this to have your parents' permission. Now I'm going to show you the third pressure activity. Another activity that you can do using air pressure is called the handheld thermometer. Now we take our temperature in a lot of different ways. Nowadays we have infrared thermometers, we have thermometers you stick in your ear, we have digital thermometers. Back in the old days, we had what was called a mercury thermometer, and some of you may still have seen it, where there's a little ball of mercury, and as it gets heated, it expands, and so it goes up and down, and scientists have calibrated that so we know exactly how hot it is. The handheld thermometer is a little bit different because it doesn't work by expanding the liquid. It works by increasing and decreasing the air pressure. In order to make this, you just need an empty plastic bottle. You can use any water bottle. I prefer to use the harder one so that I'm not accidentally squeezing it. I have a straw. Again, the straw is not quite touching the bottom. And I've put a little bit of putty on here because I need to make this airproof. Now, in order to do this, I did have to put a hole in the cap. 
If you're going to put a hole in your cap, make sure that an adult helps you with that or does that for you. And make sure that you're wearing personal protective equipment so that you don't accidentally get a splinter from that cap in your eye. But once you've got this all assembled and the putty is on there and it's airtight, you don't need to worry about anything. Now I put a little bit of water in here and I put some red food coloring just so that you could see it. And you'll see that the water in the straw is just a little bit higher than the water in here because the temperature in the building is fairly warm right now. But I'm going to warm this up even more. And when I do, the air pressure in here is going to increase because as it gets warmer, it increases and that's going to press down on the liquid. And so the liquid is going to go up in the straw. Now, my hands are a little bit cold just by nature. So I've got some of these heaters just to make it a little bit warmer. And I'm just going to put the heaters on the top. And as I do this, you should see that red liquid begin to rise. You see that going up and up and up. So as this gets hotter and hotter, the liquid's going to go up higher and higher. Now, if you really want to have fun, you can put a blow dryer on this. But if you do that, make sure that you're ready for the overflow because that will heat it up so quickly. A lot of times that water comes all the way up the straw and gushes out the top but this is just warming it up a little bit. Now, what would happen if I made it cold? So I'm going to set it down here for just a second so it can cool back to room temperature. And I have an instant cold pack. This is the kind that you use if you, you, know, you get a sprain or something and you just want to get some ice on it, right? You have to kind of break them and shake them to get them going, oh, now it's getting cold. What do you think is going to happen when I put cold on this? So when I made it hot, the air pressure increased and the liquid went up. What do you think will happen when I make the air colder? Well, let's find out. So now I'm cooling this down. You can see the liquid is going down, 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 down. Now, once the liquid gets low enough, it's still dropping pressure and it needs to bring in some air from the outside and it actually will start to bubble. There comes the bubbles. And if I get this very, very, very cold, you'll see lots of bubbles forming. Do we just have one? Here comes another bubble. Whoop. Again, this is something that you can have fun with at home. All of the instructions for these three activities, including how to make your thermometer, are found on our website under the educational resources. It's called The Pressure is On Air Pressure Activities. This is Dee from Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. I hope that you find some exciting things to spend your time on today, including some of these pressure activities. And remember, keep looking up.